South Pacific. They'd come back for those left behind. They did not arrive in assault crafts or in rubber boats off landed from a submarine, nor were they wearing the green fatigues and carrying the M1 rifles their fallen brethren had carried. This time the Marines landed, not in the stealth of night, but in broad daylight. This band disembarked from a C-130 and their attire was the formal dress blue uniform. They carried coffins instead of guns. On this December day of 1999, the Marines had come to claim the bodies of the 19 men who had been killed in action on 17, 18 August, 1942. The Marines asked the island people to bury their dead when the action ended and they were never recovered. These Marines were part of the few, the proud, but not forgotten. They were not forgotten by the survivors of that action or by the U.S. Army Central Identification Lab Hawaii, commonly known as Silhai. They were not forgotten by the Batari Tari people. The elders on that island all too well remembered the time when the Japanese came in 1941 and they remembered that August day a year later when Carlson's 2nd Marine Raiders landed on their beaches. There had been no U.S. Marines in Batari Tari, not for almost 60 years. In 1942, this small island was named Macon Atoll, a part of what was then called the Gilbert Islands. During that time of World War II, this island was the site of a short but fierce battle. Carlson's Marine Raiders were forced back by the Japanese. Nineteen of their men had been killed, including Sergeant Clyde Thomason, the first enlisted Marine recipient of the Medal of Honor. In their hasty retreat, the Marines could not take their dead with them, so they asked the Batari Tari people, please, bury our dead so the Japanese cannot find them. Years went by after the war and Silhai was finally contacted and were told that there was a Batari Tari man on the island who as a teenager during that action had helped bury the dead. He knew where they were. Silhai went out and found the graves. They found that these men had been buried with great reverence and respect by the Batari Tari people. And even more phenomenal, the remains were found intact. Their steel helmets were still on their heads, dog tags around their necks, and their M1 rifles were placed in their arms. These men had been given a warrior's burial. Silhai contacted the Marine Corps and told them of their find and asked what action would they like Silhai to take. That's when the Marine Corps sent out that C-130 and their honor guard. The bodies were placed in flag-covered coffins. And while standing at strict attention, awaiting for the order to load the bodies on that aircraft, a voice, a voice was heard from behind. From the halls of Montezuma. It was the little Batari Tari man. He spoke no English. But when the Marines had landed in 42, they had taught him their song. 
He knew what the song meant to them, and he was paying his last respects to those men who had tried to free his island from the Japanese in the time of that terrible war. Yahweh, Yahweh, Kamate Aho, Behine, Hokimaira, Behine, Hokimaira, E Papa, E Papa. Yeah.